This is volume one, book one, page one of The Life of Ken. That's me. And uh, we open the book up and we see that there's a table of contents. And within the table of contents, each chapter equates one full calendar year of the life of me. Now, rather than starting at the very beginning, we're going to fast forward, we're going to flip the page to chapter 20. So chapter 20 uh, opens up with me. Uh, as a full-time student at Centennial College, I'm taking the Career and Work Counselor program. Uh, in addition to that, I'm also working part-time. I'm doing telephone surveys uh, for a company at Young and Eglinton. And things are going okay. They're going pretty good. Uh, until one night uh, after I finished work, it was a Sunday evening, and I go to bed, and then I'm trying to fall asleep, and as I'm doing that, my heart starts to hurt. And I don't mean that in the metaphorical sense that I experienced like heartache or uh, unrequited love, although I had, but it wasn't related to that. I was experiencing chest pains. And along with that too, a real strong sense of depersonalization, a real intense fear and panic swept over me. Now, I'm no stranger to panic attacks. I've had them quite a few times. So like anything, you just gotta wait it out and wait and wait, and wait. Uh, but this time, it didn't actually go away. It stayed, and it stayed, and it stayed. Until the very next day, I went to school. Not sure how I did that, to be honest. Uh, later that evening, I went to emergency at Sunnybrook, and they took a whole lot of tests. And they said, okay, we think we know what might be wrong with you. And I said, that's a relief, thank you. Let's have the diagnosis, please. So they said, we think you have uh, something called pericarditis, which is the inflammation of the outer part of the heart. It's a virus. And don't worry, it'll probably go away in about three weeks or so. Fantastic, great. Happy to have that label. And so I went home, and days turned into days, and weeks turned into weeks, and months turned into months. And I felt the same. It didn't go away. So this started my process of seeing specialists and trying to get some semblance of what was wrong with me. What was I really experiencing? And so I saw many specialists and I had many tests and much of my life tests have not really gone my way. I remember when I first graduated uh, high school, I actually took a vocational assessment. I don't know if you've taken vocational assessments before, but I understand how they got to what was going to be one of my number one vocational picks. And they took my, my appreciation for creativity and imagination and such, and they blended it with my love of animals. Do you want to take a guess? What do you think my number one occupation was? What was that, sorry? Veterinarian? I love that. No, that wasn't it, but that would be amazing. Zookeeper? Uh, that would be pretty cool. I like being indoors, but that would be pretty cool. Uh, it was actually a fur designer. Oh. Fur designer, so. <laughs> I like animals so much I want to wear them. <laughs> but that's not, that's not what I wanted at all. So my experiences with uh, tests and labels and things have not gone so well. And as a last ditch effort, I saw my family doctor. My family doctor suggested, why don't I go see a psychiatrist? So I said, okay, I've never done that before. And within one hour, I walked away with four additional labels. I was diagnosed with social phobia, panic disorder, generalized anxiety, and major depression. But in some ways, I actually felt pretty good about that because at least I had some words, some labels to identify to put something to what I was experiencing for so long. So I was given a regimen of antidepressants, anti-anxiety uh, medication, but it didn't help in any way. And all of this was happening over the course of my 20s, just when things were starting to look up. I survived high school only to experience this? No, that didn't seem fair at all. My life receded from me, and I could not continue in the way that I functioned before. And I couldn't work, so I was on Ontario Works. I was on welfare for many months. And within that too, I decided that, hey, I think I've got a significant disability as well. And so I applied to the Ontario Disability Support Program, income supports, and I actually got denied initially because they felt that my disability wasn't long lasting or significant enough. So what I had to do was to hire a lawyer to go in front of what's called the Social Benefits Tribunal to plead my case in front of a judge to say that, no, I actually do have a substantial disability that is going to be long lasting and concurrent. And so I actually 
was awarded. I was allowed to have a ODSP income supports. So great, that was another label that I chose to take on. And in some ways it was a victory because I really feel for many people, they do need additional supports. And in that moment, I really believed that I needed that additional supports as well. But the problem was it was a hollow victory. It didn't leave me feeling good. It didn't feel, uh, I, I didn't feel empowered by it all. If anything, it was diminishing. And as I said earlier, my life had been receding. My life was dissolving around me. And it was terrible. These were the labels and the stories that I accumulated, like walking through a forest, collecting burrs. And the good news is that over time, I've learned to step away from those labels. And it wasn't easy to actually challenge your story because I didn't have any evidence and I felt I didn't have the tools or the self-efficacy to do anything else. But I did. And maybe that's a, another chapter in my story. But I just put out to you that my experience, I've learned the power and how crucial and cautious it is to be, to be aware of what stories you're telling yourself and to be aware of the labels that other people want to bestow on you because they might not be fair. And I'll leave you with the words of one of my favorite doctors. That's Dr. Zeus. Will you succeed? <laughs> yes, of course you will. 98 and three quarters percent guaranteed. Thank you so much, everyone.